Boker Tov, good. Yeladin, Boker Tov, good morning, everybody. It's time for class. Good morning, Rabbi. How are you guys this morning? Good. Was it raining up by your house? Yes. All right. All right, well, since you guys are unmuted, Lara Land. Uh, uh, Shmui's going to pray. Uh, uh, Lara's are going to do the Shema. And Hadassah is going to do the Ten Commandments. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for giving us. So please help us um, more and more and make us feel better and make all of us feel better and make everybody strong and please make the kids pay attention and they should name amen amen, amen. shabbat israel yehovah eloheinu yehovah Everybody give it us little wiggly fingers, wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. All righty. Let's get to our learning today. All right, we're in Prashen number eight. This is uh, Bereshit Genesis chapter 32, verse 4 through chapter 36, verse 43. A lot of stuff goes on in these chapters. All right. Uh, Lev, would you read Bereshit 32, verse 24 to 26, please, Lever Baloney? Let's go. And Yaakov was left alone. Then some man wrestled with him until daybreak. When he saw that he did not defeat Yaakov, he struck Yaakov's hip socket so that his hip was dislocated while wrestling with him. The man said, let me go because it is daybreak. But Yaakov replied, I won't let you go until, unless you bless me. Bless me. <laughs> but there's a cat. Meow, meow, meow. You're picking your nose? All right. So, we're going to need to look at some words to see if we all understand what's going on. All right, let's take a look at the word wrestling. What is wrestling? Shmui, can you tell me what wrestling is? Some man wrestled with him until daybreak. Shmui, tell me what wrestling, wrestling is. Wrestling means that you, that you wrestle. Wrestling means you wrestle? No, Shmui, that's not how we explain something. If we're looking for a definition. You need to tell me what the word means, not use the same word. Burping means to burp. Yeah. <laughs> Shmui, what does wrestling mean? Uh, wrestling? Yeah, wrestling means... Uh, I don't know. Okay. Hadassah, do you know what wrestling is? Yes. Wrestling oh. is, is like you, like you, like, 
like you're fighting somebody? Like you're fighting somebody? That's pretty good. That's pretty good, Hadassah. Elisheva, can you tell me what the word wrestling means? Wrestle. Fight someone. What? You fight someone. You fight someone. Okay. What What do you got to do in this fighting? What do you got to try to do to the person? What are you going to try to do? Are you going to punch them? Yes, like, I'm pissed. That sounded violent. What do you got to do with them? What do you got to do, Elisheva? I'm going to punch them in the face. That would be more like boxing. That's different than wrestling. Okay. You got to fight someone. Okay, we got the first part. Uh, Yeshua, what is wrestling? It's not punching. Um, wrestling is like kind of attacking, but like when you see and and then they're like fighting each other, um, uh, like choking each other, like hitting, grabbing, punching, hitting and pulling. Grab. And bending part of your body. Okay, this is this is pretty good. This is that's pretty good, Yeshua. Okay. Uh Lev, let's go to Lev. Lev, what is the object of wrestling? Do you know what the object is? Like how do you win a wrestling match? Yeah. To win. Yeah. How, do, how do you win one? Lev, how do you win? How do you win? To defeat someone because you need to try to pin them to the ground or else you're not going to win. They're... You need to try to pin them to the ground to win? Okay, yep, that's that's what we need. Okay, so Yeshua, you got to pull, grab, and uh, there's really not so much punching in wrestling, okay, but to pin them to the ground until they say, you win and they yield to you okay so we now that we know what wrestling is all right all right um victoria it says he wrestled with him until daybreak explain to me what daybreak is so the whole class understands what daybreak is um i think daybreak means like the the um like Noon, I guess, or until sunrise. Noon or sunrise. I think they're very different. Oh, noon and sunrise. Yes, they are, but like, um, I'm not exactly sure what daybreak means. Okay. Let's see if Allie May can help us out. Allie May, what is daybreak? It's not noon. Um, Daybreak is like, um, basically, it's the part in the morning when the sun comes up, when the sun is coming up over the horizon. Okay, very good, Allie Mae. Part of the morning when the sun comes up, okay, it's dark and then it comes over the hill or it goes over the trees where you can see it, okay? That's daybreak, okay? So it's after the night is over when day breaks so we need to know that for this wrestling match that went on between Yaakov and Yeshua okay uh so we now know what wrestling is in daybreak then it says he struck Yaakov's hip socket let's go over to Mia Mia what does it mean by he struck S T R U C K struck Yako's hip socket. Well, I could say that this man hit Yako like so hard enough to dislocate the hip. What does it mean to dislocate the hip? What does it do so that the, everybody can understand what that is? So, because the hip is a joint, there's a one part. There's a one part which this would be the top of the bone. 
And then there's the other bone that goes over it. it may, so, so that because it's inside the, the socket part, which is what covers the bone from the other bone, so it's joined together, so that, that keeps the hip in place. The bone that connects, like, I think it's the bone on your, that begins your leg. I forgot what that was called. Um, that, that bone on the top of your leg, which connects with the hip socket, which is a sort of cover, you could say. It, since those two are connected together, it helps for your hip. That helps you to move around. And when the man hit Yaakov, that bone got popped out of its socket. Very good, Mia, very good. The bone on the top of your leg, the, the top part of the bone is called a femur. Okay, the femur is in your hip socket. It's called a ball and joint socket. And it moves around, your leg moves like this, and it stays in the socket, okay? It stays in the socket. But when you dislocate it, it comes out of it, and you can't walk. Okay, and it hurts a lot. You can put it back in, okay, but it really hurts, okay? So the man struck this Yaakov's hip socket, okay, and then he couldn't move around, okay? Uh, let's see. Let's see if people were listening. Uh, Hadassah, can you tell me what daybreak is again? Hadassah, daybreak, and Hadassah and Shmui, what is daybreak? Daybreak is like daybreak is like um when the when the sun rises. Okay, Shmuley, what do you think daybreak is? Daybreak means that the sun rises. Where does it rise from? From the sky. Where where was it before daybreak? Daybreak. Where was it? Where was it? Yeah, where where was it? Was it hiding in the in in your clubhouse? No. Well, where was it before daybreak? It was it's down, and then it came up. Okay, very good. You sure you got your hand raised? Um. The sun, where was it before? Was it in another part of the world? Okay, very good. Very good. Everybody's listening. Very good. Okay, it's pretty good for a Monday. Usually, you guys are not this good on a Monday. Okay. Then it says, let me go be, because it's daybreak, but Yaakov replied, I don't, I won't let you go unless you bless me. Uh, Elisheva, what's a blessing, Elisheva? I don't know. You don't know? Okay, let's see. Let's go to Lev. Let's see what Lev says. Lev, Lev, what is a blessing? He says, I won't let you go unless you bless me. What is he looking for? Piece of pizza? What is Eric looking for? I don't know. Well, a blessing is like something that he wants something good because a blessing can't be something bad or else that's a curse. But when you get a blessing, you you get something good. Like let's say um Yes, but you but you can take it back to Yaakov and and um Yitzhak. Yitzhak blessed Yaakov. I think he blessed Yaakov before he left. Um so he he blessed him with something good. He didn't say he didn't he didn't say like how he didn't say anything like 
oh, you're going to live in a land that has no fruits or anything. You're just going to eat. You're just going to eat cactuses or something like that. He did. He never said that. That's a curse. Okay. Blessing is something good. That's what we got out of love. And you're not going to eat cactuses. <laughs> All right, let's see, Victoria, you got the answer wrong before. What is daybreak, Victoria? Daybreak when, like, the sun rises, like, the little ball is at the horizon. Okay, so it happens around 10 o'clock in the morning? No, we're, like, well, now it's coming up at, like, 7 or 6. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Now you got the answer. All right, so this is uh, how we begin our lesson because this is the main part of the the whole for a shot. If we got to look at the whole thing from chapter 32 to chapter 36, the main idea that we're going to learn, learn about is let me go down here, get my little marker. When we look at the pictures, we got a sign here. Uh, what's it say, Ali May? What's the sign say? What do those two signs say, Ali May? It said God's way in my own way. Okay. Which is better, Ali May? God's way or your own way? God's way. Are you sure? Well, yeah. I mean, it's not good to take your own, take things into your own way. It's you always, always good to go. go ahead. It's always good to go down God's path because that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to follow his word. Do you always follow God's way? People don't always follow God's way. Not, not always. Do you? Most of the time. What happens some of the time that you don't? How, how does that happen? Um, I guess when I like, like sometimes when I'm, um, like when I get, like when I get mad at my mom or something, I, uh, I, <clears throat> I say things I shouldn't say, or I do things I shouldn't do. Okay. All right, so that's a good answer. Um, Rabbi, mm -hmm. um, my throat is sore. Would you mind not calling on me anymore? Okay. Thank you. All right, so we got God's way and my own way. Uh, let's see. Shmooey, do you follow God's way all the time, Shmuel? No. Say what he said. Uh, I think yes. You follow God's way all the time? Mm. Yes. Do, were you on the wall at all last week? No. Never? Mom didn't put you on the wall at all last week? No. She didn't, she didn't yell at you not once? No. Oh. I guess Yeshua is coming back soon, pretty. That happened. What about you, Yeshua? Do you always follow God's way? Uh, well, everybody... Everybody decides which one. Some people decide God's way and not and their way. And okay. But I didn't ask that question. I asked you, did you follow God's way all the time? Do well, you? Well, not all the time. And neither does Sammy follow God's way all the time. So is Sammy lying? Did mom yes. yell at me? We didn't go to the corner, but my mom yells. 
My mom yelled to get our attention. Because okay. we make much noise. All right. What about you, Hadassah? Do you always follow God's way? Well, not always do I follow God's way. Sometimes. Why, why sometimes you don't follow God's way? What, what happens? Uh, I get spanky. No, well, why, why didn't you follow God's way all the time? What happens if you don't? What happens if I doesn't? No, well, what happened to make you not follow God's way? Um, it's like, um, like, I don't follow God's word it's because somebody bothers me or maybe they, they, they don't listen. Okay, good answer. What about you, Lev? Do you follow God's way all the time? Not all of us follow God all the time. I don't uh -huh. even, sometimes I don't even follow God. But if you're talking about like going and doing worldly things, that's not. I don't do that. But sinning like in lying, coveting, and like disobeying your mother and father, that's some things we do every day. Sometimes we do them every day. Sometimes I even do them every day. Okay, so what what makes you not follow? Like how how do you like the sign says God's way, my own way, and they're 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 going in different directions. So how does that happen, Lev? How do you think it happens? It's by what you do. It's by your actions. But if you're talking about God's way, if you're talking about like you're talking about Hi Asher. I'm I'm playing with toys in both and Okay. Okay. <laughs> So basically what will happen is that you're you're following you're following God and you do and you on your mother and father and that's God's way. You're you're honoring your mother and father. And if you honor your mother and father, you're honoring him too. Everything you do is for God. So basically God's way, if you look at that picture, it says God's way. Then you're you're honoring God. But the sign that says my own way would be that basically it would be that you don't want to do anything that God tells you. Okay, you don't want to do anything. Well, maybe there's some things where you don't want to do certain things. Okay. And Victoria, is God's way my own way? Do you, do you follow God's way all the time, Victoria? I try to, like most of the time, yes. Most of the time. So what, 90%, 93%, 84%? Yeah, like 95% of the time I follow him. So 5% of the time you're not. How, how do you how do you get stumbled on the 5%? Why don't why aren't you like in 99.9 or 90 98? Why why at 95%? It's because like sometimes like um like sometimes I forget to do like my chores and stuff and that would be like I guess it's disobeying my mom, like not honoring her, I guess. And then like sometimes I'll lie, but like by accident, I guess. Cause like sometimes my mom will ask me something and then I'll automatically say like, um, so if she asks me if I'm doing my work, I'll like automatically say yes. Like instead of like actually thinking if I am or not, I guess like, 
I'll, I won't be doing my work when she asks, but then I'll say yes, so then I'd be lying. So you don't want to get in trouble, so that's what happens when you do my own way, is you're, you're trying to uh, not get in trouble with your yeah. mom? Yeah. Wouldn't it be easier just to tell the truth instead of trying to make up a lie? Yes. But, like, I guess I just, like, said it so much that, like, now I don't, I don't even, like, really think. I'll just, like, hear what comes out of her mouth, and then I'll just say, like, the good things instead of, like, saying the truth, you know? <laughs> so I have to, like, stop doing that, but. Okay. All right, everybody. This is a good beginning to our class this week. You know, trying to see, it says God's way and my own way, and they're going in different directions, okay? The reason we're talking about this is sometimes if you know that you're going in the wrong direction, you can stop going in the wrong direction and turn around and go back to God's way, okay? So once you know that there's a problem, you can fix the problem, okay? But if you don't know that there's a problem, if, uh, like Shmui said, that uh, he was he was always following God's way this past week, and Yeshua said, no, he wasn't, okay? So once you know that there's a problem, you can fix the problem. It's better than having somebody else have to fix it for you, okay? So if somebody has to fix your problem for you, then there's going to be more problems, okay? Now, if God has to fix your problem, it's going to be big problems. Okay, big problems. You don't want big problems. Okay, you want to keep your problems as small as possible. All right, all right. Let's move on to my notes here. Okay, so all right, uh, Victoria, read verse four and five, or sheet thirty-two, verse four and five. With these instructions, here's what you are to say to the Lord. Esau, your servant Yaakov says, I have been living with Laban and have stayed until now. I have cattle, donkeys, and flocks, and male and female servants. I am sending to wait, I am sending to tell you this news to my Lord in order to win your favor. All right, thank you, Victoria. All right, so now we need some, we got to go through some more vocabulary words. Okay, to understand what's going on here, especially for the little ones. What does the word instruction mean? Ellie Shaver, what does the word instruction mean? What is it in? Can you tell me what an instruction is? Instruction follow the rules. Instructions follow the road? Not the rules. The rules. Okay, how do you follow instructions when you're baking? Well, when you're baking, what do you follow? Instructions. Okay, you could say that. Instructions. Instruction, you make like a cake. You follow the uh -huh. cake. You follow the instructions and make the cake. Very good. You need to follow those instructions. Because baking is very hard. You have to be very precise and following the instructions. Okay, so instructions. Instructions are the way to do something. From the, you know, when you're writing a letter, let's say you're you're making a, a lowercase a, you got a round and a stick, or if you're doing a lowercase b, do a line and a bubble, okay? A line and a bubble, line and a bubble, okay? So you got to follow instructions how to, when you're learning how to write. And as you get older, you get more uh, more difficult, more harder instructions, okay? So, Yaakov says these instructions to his servants, okay? Okay, let's see. Uh, let's go to Hadassah. In verse 5, it says, I have cattle, donkeys, and flocks, and male and female servants. Why, why is he... Why is he telling his servants to tell Esau, his brother, that he, he has all these things? Why is he telling him to tell his brother that? Because 
thinking they were going to make maybe the offering. He's going to make them in the offering. He's going to get. Why is he telling his brother this? Now remember, the last time Yaakov saw his brother, his brother was real mad at him. He said, I'm going to kill my brother. I'm going to rip his nose off and eat his boogers. Um, because he, um, I don't know. Do you think he's may maybe scared? Um, yes, he's scared because his brother might kill him. He's scared his brother might kill him. Okay. All right. Lev. Lev. No, wait, let me go to Yeshua. I forgot. He, he's in the picture. There he is. There's his head. All right. Yeshua. Why would he be telling him, telling his brother he's got all this stuff? Because he wants to maybe lower his anger. What do you mean, lower his anger? By telling his brother he's got flocks and male and female servants, he's trying to lower his brother's anger? How? By not making him angry that much because. He's afraid he might kill him still. But instead, Esau comes happy. Okay. So he's going to tell him he's got cattle, donkeys, and flocks, and male and female servants. That's going to make his brother happy? Mm, no. But, he, but when he sees Jacob, he's going to say, keep the flock. Okay, well, we're, we're trying to get that before. Okay, let me go over to Lev. Lev. Now, you should give us some of the answer. Okay, so do you think Esau is still mad at Yaakov at this point? You know, because the last time he saw him, he was like, I'm going to bite his nose off and eat his boogers. I'm going to rip his ears off and eat his brain. Arr. He's not mad because later on he said, "What? What is all this? And who? And and who are these people that are with you?" If if he would have still been mad, he would he would have said, "Oh, look at those people! Let's get them!" <laughs> or or go kill them. He was coming with peace. He maybe he maybe his anger may be subsided. His anger may be subsided. Okay. Mia, what do you think Yaakov's reasoning was for wanting to send all these things to his brother? What, what do you think his reason was? Mia? Well, Yaakov is still panicked and panicked about Esau. After hearing that Esau's coming with four hundred men, he thinks Esau's bringing an army. And after wrestling with that man, Yaakov's still like, "What happened?" So, him see hearing that Yaakov's coming over with four hundred men, he's like, he thinks Esau's going to kill him and his whole household. So he sent all these animals over as a gift basically as a way to make peace with his brother because he still thinks his brother's mad he still thinks his brother's mad and you uh uh thought it was a peace offering hey victoria wouldn't you think that esau his brother would say uh Oh, he's got all this stuff. Let me take this stuff, and then I'll go kill the re kill the, him still, and I'll get the rest of the stuff. Um. Yes, but like. Um. He wanted to like. Um. Okay, so like Esau wanted to 
Wait, I'm still lost right now. You still lost? Did you eat breakfast? Yes. Did you have some coffee? No, I had tea. Did you have some strong tea, some Earl Grey or something? Um, chamomile tea? Chamomile's for sleeping. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. I didn't know that. Okay, so you're sleepy. All right. So, he, Yaakov is, now, do you th think that Esau is still mad after all this time? Do you think he's going to come and you know, I'm gonna rip my brother's nose off his face and eat his boogers and I'm going to rip his ears off his head and I'm going to eat his brain and you know, I'm going to kill him dead? Victoria? Yeah, but he. <laughs> Are you there? You got somebody there with you because you don't have your camera on. Um, I'm, I'm at um someone's house right now. So you're having a difficult time paying attention. I'm paying attention, but I'm just like confused, kind of. What are you confused about? Like, like how, like I'm confused on, like, wh I'm confused on who's telling like the servants to like tell the other person to do something. Well, Yaakov is telling his servants, here's what you're to say to my Lord Esau. You're serving Yaakov, so right there in verse 4, you see who's talking, right? Yeah. So Yaakov is talking to his servants to tell, he's telling his servants to tell his brother Esau that he has all this stuff. Cattle, donkeys, flocks, male and female servants. I'm sending to tell you this news, my Lord, meaning talking to Esau, in order to win your favor. Okay, what does win your favor mean? It, it, means, it means to like, so I guess there would be like two people that, okay, wait, let me use an example. So um, maybe there would be like a judge and then there would be two people that would like, Okay, wait, so there would be two people that are in court, right? And then there's a judge. But maybe there would be, like, maybe one of the two people were a judge's friend. So then they would automatic. well, no, sometimes they would, like, automatically have their favor because they're friends, but that's not right. So what does it mean to try to win somebody's favor? Um, it would basically mean to, like, do extra things for them so that they would like you and then, like, be your friend and then they would help you with things. Okay, pretty good, Victoria. Mia, what does it mean to win uh, somebody's favor, Mia? Well, to win somebody's favor means, like, Okay, so say Esau was still mad. Yaakov sent these animals over to win ya Esau's favor, meaning that he think he thinks that that since Esau's still mad, seeing all these animals, meaning more riches for him, maybe that that maybe Esau's gonna be nice and to be and be merciful towards Yaakov. You're muted. And and that's when I'll say something else. Also, Yaakov wanted to win win Esau's favor in order to make terms for peace. To make peace with him before anything. So he's trying to win his favor. Did he did he ask God, you know, before he did all this? Mia? Did Yaakov ask God? You muted. Well, 
-hmm. He did pray to, to God, telling for the Lord to be merciful to him. So Yaakov wants to make terms for peace with his brother, which I think the Lord would do. He's always done that. Okay. All right. So Yaakov is sending all this stuff to his brother. He hasn't seen his brother in a long time, everybody. Long time. Over 20 years. Okay. Older than any of you. Now, each time when we're talking about this, we always ask a, a good question. There's one to think about. Okay. And we'll start with Yeshua. How long can you stay mad at somebody? I I stay mad for like a few seconds or minutes. So like you three seconds or like four minutes. Four minutes, you say not five minutes, not ten minutes, not a half hour. You're you get a, you're not mad after five minutes. Nope, nope. Okay. What about you, Shmooey? How long do you stay mad? Uh, uh, I don't know. He stays mad like almost an hour. What? He stays mad like like ten minutes, and then he attacks me. <laughs> he looks at me for ten minutes, and then he attacks me. So he only, he only stays mad for ten minutes, and then he and he, then he goes back to playing with you, attacking me. Oh, so he's so he's still angry. Mm, for a little bit, until he starts jumping on me. All right. What about you, Madassa? Do you stay mad at people for a long time? No, I stay mad for like ten minutes too. I think 10 minutes and uh, she comes down and leaves. Okay, all right. Uh, what about you, Ali Shava? How long do you stay mad? Uh, 10 minutes. 90 seconds. Do you know what you think you Ali? I get mad. Yeah, like 30 seconds. Okay. She doesn't get mad, Rabbi. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. All right. What about, uh, I thought you, I thought you said you don't get mad, Ellie Shava. Ellie Shava. Yeah, you don't get mad. No, she doesn't, Rabbi. Okay. All right. What about you, Lev? Do you stay mad, like, for an hour or 10 hours or... A week? No, no. Me and Nia only stay mad at each other for a few seconds. <laughs> because if Mia's really angry at me or something, doing something, then the maximum for being mad is only like three minutes. But if it's or a minute or a minute, yes. Um. But if it's not something serious and Mia's like mad, then then usually sometimes I do something goofy or I accidentally spill hot water on my foot and <laughs> jumping on one foot. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And we start laughing. And there we go, we start talking again. I don't even stay we don't even stay mad at each other for even an hour. Yeah. So or thirty minutes. In life of three minutes. So, it, the reason we're talking about this is because you guys are all saying, I didn't get to Vicky yet, um, that you don't stay mad at your siblings at all. And Esau and Yaakov, they're twins. I mean, they're the same age. So, me is, you know, a couple years older than Lev. You know, usually sometimes older siblings get aggravated with their younger siblings because. They're a lot different in age. So imagine being the same age, you know? So now this is a bit, Yaakov is maybe acting a little weird. Uh, what about you, Victoria? How long do you stay mad at somebody? Um, Like with my brothers, I'll get mad at them for like a couple minutes. 
only, and then I'll go like back to talking to them normally. What about your brothers? Do they do they stay mad at you, or have you seen them stay mad at people for a long time? No, no. they don't really like get mad at me. <laughs> like if they do, though, it'll only be for like three minutes, and then they'll forgive me for what I did. <laughs> Okay, have you ever seen anybody who stay mad for a long time? Um, yeah, um, I have um, my mom's friend. She was one time like mad at someone for like weeks and she didn't talk to them at all. So how do you think this happens since you, you don't stay mad at your brothers? You've heard everybody else talk, they don't sound, stay mad at their brother or sister. How do you see, how do you think these people do that? How do you think they stay mad so long? Well, I mean, like probably because of wait. So, if someone like did something like really really bad to them, or like said like spread a rumor about them that wasn't true at all, then they'd probably like maybe try to not be their friend anymore. So then like they need time to see if they'll forgive them or if they'll just not want to be a friend at all. Okay. All right. This is good. It's good to talk about because when, when we don't have it in us to stay mad at other people, like Yaakov thought his brother was so mad at him after 20 years. That's a long time. It's 20 years is longer than all you guys are, are been on this earth as, people okay so sometimes it's and it's good that you guys don't stay mad okay it's something very good that you can forgive just like Yeshua forgave us okay so sometimes when we're talking about this stuff we can't understand why Yaakov would think his brother was so mad because it does it's not part of who we are okay so it's good to talk about this stuff because what Yeshua says we should be as wise as a serpent and as gentle as a dove. Okay, Yeshua our Messiah says we should be wise as a serpent, as a devil, and as gentle as a dove. Okay, sometimes when we don't understand things, it's because we don't think that way. Okay, so, and it's good that you guys have all said that you don't think that way, and that's a good, good way to something. Very good. Right. It's time for the LMA. Everybody do the LMA. Oh. All right. Let's move on to our next page. We've got a few more minutes left of class. All right. Um, let's see here. Mia, can you read verse 6, please? The messengers returned to Yaakov, saying, We went to your brother Esau, and he's coming to meet you. With him are 400 men. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Lev. Perfect timing. All right. The Heckle and Jekyll show over there. Okay. You can watch Heckle and Jekyll on YouTube. Okay, uh, it's a cartoon from the way back when. Okay, so let's go over to Yeshua. Yeshua, why do you think Esau is bringing 400 men with him? Why didn't he just come with him, like himself and maybe his own family? Because he doesn't want, maybe like he thinks Esau, Esau thinks maybe that Jacob is coming to fight him, and he needs backup, and and he thinks he needs backup or protect him. So you think Esau thinks that Yaakov is still mad at him? Yes. What do you think, Adasa? Do you, why do you think Esau is bringing? 400 men. Now, he's not bringing 
cattle or sheep or offerings. He's bringing 400 men and they're probably all on horses or camels or something. And they're coming at Yaakov. Why do you think he's bringing 400 men? Because he's taking 400 men is because he thinks his brother is taking men is going to fight him, have a war, and so he needs more backup. He need, he called um he he, he said he he called um met a war of people and and he and he took them to help him to protect him for hiding him for his brother doesn't kill him. So you you think this is for backup too? Okay. What about you, Victoria? Esau is bringing now. Yaakov was sending cattle, sheep, donkeys, and servants, and Esau is bringing four hundred men. Well, why do you think he's bringing four hundred men? What's the purpose of that? It's because he thinks like his brother wants war with him, I guess, and his like he thinks his brother is still mad at him. So he probably thinks that like Yaakov wants to kill him. Well, why would he think Yaakov want to kill him since it was Yaakov who ran away from the from his parents? Um. Well, because he was like mad at him. Yaakov was mad, or Esau was mad. Esau was mad. <laughs> so. If Esau was mad, why? Is, so you think Esau is still mad? He's bringing these four hundred men. Yes, he like Esau thinks that Yak. Wait, wait, Yaakov. Oh my gosh, who's wait? Okay, is Esau is the one that's bringing like four hundred men, right? Yeah, it said. Read verse six, Victoria. Read it out loud. The messengers returned to Yaakov, saying, We went to your brother Esau, and he is coming to meet you. With him, wait, he is coming to meet you. With him are 400 men. So who's coming with the 400 men? Esau. And why is Esau come with 400 men? Because he thinks his brother is mad at him. Why would he think that? They haven't talked to them in 20 years. They didn't have phones. They didn't have mail. They didn't have email. They didn't have video conferencing. Um. Well, he hasn't talked to his brother in like over 20 years, so he doesn't really know what like his brother is gonna do or like what he's what he's thinking, I guess. So why would he bring 400 men? You think he's He's worried about his brother attacking him? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, let's go over to Mia. Mia, what do you think? What's the purpose of 400 men? Why not 100? Why not 50? Why not 1,000? I don't know. What, I don't know why he brought 400 men. Let's see what the bottom says. Could it be this? It could be the significance, maybe in the number. I mean, I don't understand why Esau would have to bring four hundred men. It could probably be, maybe, maybe Esau has already become a powerful mate. Maybe Esau has has became a powerful people so far, and he's just bringing with him who he's got with him. So you think he's bringing who he's got with him? I mean. Why would he want to bring the 400 men? Don't you think that's going to cost a lot? You know, all these people, you know, you got to feed them, you got to make sure they're horses or whatever they're, they're bringing. You know, he's not walking with them, you know, this. So they got to have lodging, you got to pay them. Why do you think, why do you think Esau would think that Yaakov was mad? Or why, why, why would he want to bring 400 men? Mia? Safety pur purposes, maybe. Safety <laughs> purposes? Maybe. I mean, I think of what you're saying about the cost of like lodging and food and everything. I think, I think each of the people there in that whole crowd probably bought their own things. 
I mean, just just enough water to drink in the desert for 400 men and possibly the animals that they're riding. That, that could be a lot of stuff, don't you think? What do you think? What do you think? Maybe maybe they brought like um maybe some people brought water for their horses if they had horses. But I don't know why four hundred men. You know what what do you think what do you think's going on in Esau's head, Lev? Like why why do you think he would bring all these people instead of maybe just like twenty? Things going on with things going on in Esau's head. Maybe he was scared. Maybe he was scared too. Maybe he maybe he did. Maybe he thought that um, Yaakov had a bigger army than him. That's what I'm guessing. That's what you're guessing. Okay. So you're thinking that you know he's afraid. You're thinking that his two brothers are going to war. Yeshua said uh, he's bringing back up, so he's just getting ready for a fight, okay? Wouldn't it be strange to want to kill your brother? Yeshua, wouldn't it be strange to want to kill your brother? Yeah. Some people kill your brother, some people don't. Some people like it, some people don't. It's not nice to kill your brother. It's not nice to kill your brother? So, why do you think he's bringing 400 men? Doesn't it look like he's getting ready for a war? Yes, he's getting ready for war. But it won't be happy that you killed your brother. Then your father or maybe your mother will be upset. Okay, very good, Yeshua. Victoria, you're going to be our last person. Why would you want to kill your brother, Victoria? Well, I mean, some people, like, I guess they would kill their siblings because they were probably jealous. And, like, they, like, their siblings would probably get, like, all the attention and then they were just left out. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, we can think about this a little bit because it started with the first two brothers. Okay. Cain killed Havel, right? And he was jealous. Victoria said jealousy. Okay. So, it could be something like that. All right. So, we're going to go on. The, the, we, in the week, we're going to go on and we're going to talk about this and things like that. We're going to talk about jealousy. We're going to talk about restoration. But now we're going to end our class. And we're going to end it in prayer. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. Yeshua's hand was first. I think... I think 10. You're muted. You think wrong. I Lev. Lev had her hand up second. Um, I'm thinking six. You six. Think, you think wrong. Uh Ali Sheva. Look at this. One. You thought wrong. Victoria? Four? You thought right. Victoria wins. She gets to close us in prayer. What an honor. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for giving us this class and rabbi. Please let us have a wonderful day today and learn a lot of things. And please give us more time for you and let us want to read Torah more. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. All right, everybody, have a great day. Stay dry. Bye. Bye. Bye.